Well, I don't know if it's worth walking in here, but you know. There might be a bit of vacant land up the top there, which might have glids on it or something, you know. Looks like it could have perfect uh, morning and afternoon sunnage up there, so you know. That might be a bonus of this trip here, and we might find a patch of land that has a lovely, either an early glid season or a you know, post late glid season that's, uh, you know, a back pocket, uh, a back pocket of uh, photography there in case you need an emergency back pocket for some reason. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, the as I said, the season is coming to a rapid end, and uh, I still my CPA and still hasn't turned up. Tomorrow it'll be five weeks tomorrow since Andrew Broom in New Zealand has got his copy, and I haven't got mine. And well, I'm assuming now if the U.S. government is going to open up, back up, the postal service is going to start flowing next week sometime. So you know, hopefully. Uh, I'll get it sometime within seven weeks, so I only have to wait another two weeks to start with. As I said, I don't, even though I can read it online, I don't know, I just don't get the same sort of pleasure of staring at a screen in front of you rather than sitting on a, you know, a chair or a couch or something. Something, a bite to eat, a nice cup of coffee with the actual thing you can open up and flip into it not straight in your face sort of thing, uh, angle and you can, you know, look at the photograph sort of thing. Even though I do like pictures on a nice LCD screen, it's just, uh, it, I just got to be honest. There's something about being able to have a book or something that you can quickly dart into and refer to, you know, trying to find something. Oh, where was it? Which issue was it in? If, you, if all your issues of CPN are there, you probably remember the front cover or something, you know, you can just grab it and dip into it and get the information. I don't think people trying to find that on a CD-ROM or something, you know, you first you've got to, you know, fire the computer up, you've got to find the CD-ROM if you're not organised that much, stick it in the computer. And then of course years have probably gone by and you've either got, got a new program or something and it doesn't register the CD-ROM or something and all those sort of problems. With a, with a hard copy of CPN, you don't have any of those problems. Once you've got it, 20, 30 years down the track, you can just open it up and read it, can't you? You know? Okay, you may be wearing glasses then, because your eyes have grown dim over the years, but you can still read it. You can still show somebody else very quickly. Someone comes around to your house, you don't have to waste time firing up the computer, you know, going through the CD ROM, oh, I'll just get it for you, blah, 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 blah. Someone comes around your house, if you, you know, have been reading these things quite regularly, like I used to read things in the toilet uh, in WA because I had nothing else basically to read because in my days there were very few books and things on, on CPs I mean everything in the library you went to and you found everything was screaming hey you're in the you're in the centre of the world you're in the mecca of CPs you know none of the locals seem to know that you know this is the place to be and you're, you're it you're at the centre of the world and you know <laughs> pat yourself on the back sort of thing <laughs> yes uh, I didn't really get that um, full impression until I came to South Australia and of course here we only have the same species all the time, you know, the same eight or nine. But uh, whereas in WA, wherever you go, you may get the odd, you know, three, two, three, four species the same as down the road, but everything else is different and that just keeps happening wherever you go, you know. So that's what I'm saying, you know. There should be micro conservation parks everywhere and you never know what you're going to find, you know. Could be something in some corner of some pocket of some conservation park out there. As I said, look out for this white polypomphalix. It might be somewhere out there. You definitely was a... You could definitely see it was polypomphalix. You could definitely see it was related to the, the, the taller pink ones. But it had different notching on it. So, uh, yeah. And I haven't seen it as a JPEG on Google image. So, you know, it's still out there somewhere, fellas. And as, as I said, 
you got my permission to name it after yourself since I've raised the rank on Drosera glandulosa up to Neurodrosera in preparation for the discovery of some sort of botanical nervous system in the in the park because if you've seen some of the footage you know when you trigger a, a, a ribbon tentacle sometimes you get a ribbon tentacle that uh, fires off on the other side of the plant on the leaf next to it or on the other side of the plant sort of thing and it looks like there's probably lots more stuff that's going to come out of it but I think this clip is coming to an end and I think I am coming to something so I'll start a new clip now